Today, I thought I'd share some of the things that I've been working on for our upcoming live training and also a big course update that will be coming to you later this year. Now, if you've taken any of my courses or been to any of my live training before, you'll know that I like to try and kind of peel back the layers of how web apps work and really get to the root cause of a vulnerability rather than just fuzzing for payloads. And of course, after presenting and explaining these concepts, we have practical labs to practice applying specific techniques in different scenarios. And I really think that this is the optimal way to build both knowledge and skills. So let's take a small sneak peek of our new labs and see how we can solve it. If you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. So here we have the new lab portal and this is a place where we can manage our labs, launch them, tear them down, etc., etc. And basically what happens when we launch a lab is that it builds a fresh container for the application to run in and also if needed it connects other components so things like a database or maybe a WAF for the more advanced ones or some of them have uh, an API gateway and might spin up multiple containers because it's a microservices environment. Now in my training I usually like to do 10 to 20 minutes of theory and demonstration and then give some tasks or labs for students to work on so for example we might walk through union select payloads again Against a local database so that we can understand the structure and the results of this payload and then also debug the application to see exactly what is returned to the application and then exactly what the application is doing with the results before passing them back to the clients because remember that when we have things like injection we're usually hitting multiple functions or maybe multiple technologies before we actually see the results and the output and of course in the case of SQL injection when we using the application we rarely see the raw output we usually see what's been handled by the web application and what's been passed back to us so this really helps us peeling back different layers and understanding what's actually happening with the bug or vulnerability and after we dive into theory this is when we uh, access these labs here and when we have labs usually I give like 10 to 15 minutes per lab and then we walk through them together so all we'll understand what's happening and maybe explore different payloads that we use to get the same results. So for each section, we have a few different labs and then we'll have a challenge as well. So for example, if we filter broken access control and scroll down, currently there are three labs sitting in here and then there's also a challenge lab as well. And the labs themselves are designed to help you understand a specific vulnerability, but the challenge is sp supposed to mimic a real world scenario. So it's either something that I've seen in the past or it's taken from something like a bug bounty report or a string of reports that showcase a common issue, I try and rebuild that same scenario. So the challenges are really hopefully going to help bridge the theory and the practice and the real world. So let's take a look at one of the challenges. Elevate your cybersecurity expertise with TCM security certifications. Our certifications offer in-depth practical training in penetration testing and ethical hacking. With real-world exam scenarios and expert guidance, you're not just gaining a certificate, you're gaining a skill set that's in high demand. Visit certifications.tcm-sec.com and take your first step towards a distinguished cybersecurity career. Let's do this secure notes challenge. And if we just start, we can see that the lab is starting up and it's just setting up the database for us. And here we go. And we can open the lab here. So here we have a register and login and uh, full disclosure for the front ends and like the styling and things like that. I did use a lot of AI because I don't have time to sit and write CSS and um, build HTML forms and things like that all day. So that really, really helps. So if you want some insight into how I use AI, a lot of my front ends are built using AI and then the back ends because previously I did more back end development than front end. I generally build the back ends myself. And so here, what we can do is we can come in and log into this application. So let's see, looks like we have our secure notes app. So we have public notes and we have the admin and this requires admin privileges. And if we come back to here, there is actually a task that's defined. So it says find and exploit the broken access control vulnerability. So in the labs, in the practice labs, 
usually there's more specific tasks so but in here it just says find the vulnerability so this gives us a little bit more scope for exploring the application and let's take a look in here so we have a user id logged in via json web token and let's go ahead and create a note so i'm just going to create a test note and save this and we can see that we have my notes and this one is private and if we create test 2 make this public we can see we can create and view these notes so if we come to here let's have a look and see what's happening with public notes we can see that there are a bunch here so travel tips book recommendations welcome public recipe and i think now is a good time to switch over to our proxy to kind of see what's exactly happening under the hood so proxy HTTP history and let's take a look. So what I'm mostly interested in because we know we're looking for broken access control is things like this. So we've got API note 14. Let's try and grab one. This is more. So welcome to secure notes. So this is a public note. So is public one. Let's see if we can get a note that is not public. Yeah, we get unauthorized. So we're going to have to upgrade our privileges it's probably, unless a note is set to public or you're the owner, you probably can't access it. And I think 14, let's take out this header so we can actually see the results and we don't get the not modified. Yeah, so test two, this one is public, but I think we must have created 13 before that. Yeah, this one isn't public, but we're the owner of this. So yeah, the author is ASD. And in here, you can see we have a JSON web token looks like the token isn't signed there's nothing on the back here so let's take a quick look at this and all I'm going to do is pull up chrome oops and just a heads up I built this lab a little while ago I can't actually remember the solution but I think we're on the right path so here we've got user ID, we've got the username and we've got the role. So let's just switch this to admin, copy this, paste this in here. So note that when you do this and um, modify tokens, what you actually want to do is it gave us the token back, but it didn't have the trailing dots. And if you know about JSON web tokens, we have the header, we have the payload, and then we have the signature. But often when you um, don't pass the signature and either the token is just decoded or it's not taking in the signature, you still need this trailing dot. So if we pass this here like this, I suspect, yeah, we just get a redirect. So we're going back to the login page. But if we add the trailing dots in the back end, what's happening is the there's a JSON web token error saying, hey, this isn't a valid token. But if we pass this dot, we can get to here. So let's see whether we can get to whoops, the one that we were unauthorized to view before. We're still unauthorized, so maybe this isn't the vulnerability. But what we might be able to do is take this token, come into the application, come into, is it being passed as a cookie? I think it is because it's in the cookie header. Replace it here. Now we could do this with intercepts with Bepsu as well, but it's sometimes easier just to place it in the application so it gets passed each time. And then we come to the admin panel and then we get the flag. And of course we can submit this flag to the front end and then continue on our journey. So currently this is the flag that we have for the dev environment. So this is not the exact flag that we're gonna submit. We're gonna submit something slightly different. And that's just because when we spin up the environment, it actually has a number of different flags and has one for each user, but I haven't updated the front end UI to reflect that yet. But obviously that's gonna be fixed before we uh, launch the labs or do the live training because everything is still a work in progress. But you can see that we've completed the task down here and then we're all good. So lab completes. And then all we need to do is just stop the lab and it becomes decommissioned and then we can move on to something else. So for example, let's go into broken authentication. And if we come down here, we can, for example, start this challenge lab here, come back up. And then if we refresh, because it'll be on the same 
IP address and the same uh, port number because it just tears down that container, spins up a new one and then routes the traffic to it. We come to a different lab. And that's it for the sneak preview. So hopefully these labs will be up and ready for the live training in August. And of course, like I say, there'll be a big overhaul of one of our courses, which you can probably guess which one a little bit later on in the year as well. So that's a sneak peek of what we've got cooking. These labs, if you want to check them out, will be part of the live training and web app boot camps coming later in August, but also keep an eye out for a course refresh a little later this year too. It's going to be a big update and I hope you all enjoy it. If you have any questions about the training, then feel free to drop into one of our live streams every Wednesday at 12 ET, or you can swing by our Discord and ask questions there. Catch you next time.